How do you know what money goes into what sinking fund envelope? How do you even set up these sinking funds? And what do you do with the money that's left over? If you've had these questions about setting up sinking funds and cash envelopes, stay tuned for today's video. Hello, my name is Wendy Coop and I'm the Savvy Brown Girl. It's right there. And today we're talking all about cash envelopes and sinking funds and answering your questions about how exactly that works. I recently had a viewer reach out to me and ask some very good questions. And I want to make sure that she gets all the answers that she needs so that she can move forward on her debt-free journey. So let's get going. First question, how do you determine what amount goes in each envelope? Excellent question. So here's what I do. I sometimes have to guess, and sometimes I have the receipts to give me an educated guess. Here's what I mean. When establishing a new category for an envelope, and this is for a sinking fund, you might not know exactly how much you need for the month or for the year, in which case you're gonna have to guess. For example, my car maintenance envelope. I knew that I needed a certain amount for this next period of getting my car serviced, but I don't know what that looks like month to month. So I'm going to have to do my best guess and pull numbers from the internet and see how much it costs to take care of the car at 80,000, 90,000 miles, things like that. How much do tires cost? Also, you can look back on your bank statements, your credit card statements, your receipts to see how much you've been spending at the grocery store. How much have you been spending on your pets? And then you average that out and that's how much you put in per month. Or if you get paid per week, divide that by four or five. I would say divide it by four because the fifth week is just a bonus week anyway. But that's basically how you decide how much goes in each envelope. Now, if these are sinking funds and you get to the end of your money before you get to the envelopes, that's okay. Just know that you've got money set aside somewhere. Like you've got your bills paid, you have money in savings, and the sinking funds can come later or on a different paycheck. And we'll talk about how to do that in a different video. Question number two, what about bills and groceries? Ooh, I love this question. Okay, so groceries get put in an envelope in our house, but most of our bills, if not all of our bills, are paid online via debit card. So when I am looking at doing the budget, and you'll see this in my previous budgeting videos, I'll link one here or here. <laughs> what I do is I list out all the bills and I know which ones are debit and which ones are being paid with cash. But like I said, most are debit. And then I have a separate column for sinking funds in cash envelopes, which are not necessarily bills, but they are things that are going to come up. Some people put cash envelopes for their bills. And all you have to do in that case is just make sure the money gets to your bank before it's time for your bill to be due. Okay, we don't wanna run into any problems there. Question number three, do you add money to your pets and car envelope each month? We do. It's a great question because almost every month there's, you know, some people have Chewy subscriptions um, and they're paying for that every month. We don't have one of those, but every month or every other month, sorry, you hear my dog. Um, we're paying for one or two bags of food, one or two bags of litter. We've got two dogs, two cats and some fish. So I put money in the envelope each month to make sure that we have the money to go to the pet store and pay those things. As for car maintenance, again, this is one of those categories where I sort of have to guess how much. I knew I was gonna need about $300 this month, turned out to cost less than that, so I've got extra left in the envelope. Question number four, what do you do with the leftover money? Well, that's entirely up to you. You see, because you can roll it over to the category for the next month and you'll have a little bit more. So you can roll over the money to the next pay period or the next month. You could take the money out uh, and unstuff the envelope and then put that money into savings. So you could do a savings challenge or you could just put it towards your emergency fund. 
it is entirely up to you what you want to do with the leftover money. Maybe it's enough leftover money that you go out to eat. Again, it's your money, it's your budget, it's your plan. Do what you want. And our last question for the day is, how often do you put money in the envelopes? That is also determined by how often we get paid. So we get some money that only comes in once a month, but then my husband also has his regular paychecks. And then as my Etsy store generates more sales, I'll get paid weekly by Etsy. So just go off of your pay period to determine how often to refill the envelopes. That way you're not putting pressure on yourself to put money in there when you didn't have any money coming in. So if you get paid weekly, budget weekly, and do your envelopes weekly. If it's monthly or bi-weekly, same thing. And of course, if you go to my Etsy shop, you will see that I have paycheck budget trackers and forms that will help you figure out what to put in what envelope, as well as tracking your bills and cash envelopes each pay period. It's not set up monthly or anything like that. It's according to however often you get paid. And I find that to be the most flexible. By the way, if you're getting value out of this video, hit the like button, comment, and by all means subscribe if this is the kind of content you like to see. We will answer one more question, or I will answer one more question, which is the household category. <laughs> I have a household category. So what goes into household? I like the household category because it's kind of a catch-all, but here's how I define household. It's non-medical things that I'm going to probably buy from Target, <laughs> okay? That's not clothing. So it's not groceries. We already have an envelope for that. It's not clothing. We have an envelope for that. And it's not medical because we have an envelope for that. So pretty much the rest of the store, <laughs> you know, the interior of the store, you know, tr replacing trash cans, recycling bins, um, things like that. To me, that's household curtains, area rugs. Um, so I just, I just use the target example because that helps me that way. I don't have to create five other envelopes. I'm just putting it all into general household. And so when we needed a recycling bin, I just pulled the money out of the household envelope. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed this content and make sure you click or tap the screen for the next video. Bye.